welcome back to my channel. Um, not too many winners last week. I was a bit disappointed with my performance, but we're here to bounce back this week and find some winners. And I've got quite a few of them that I think are going to be bold again, particularly the last horse. But let's get into the preview to find out who they are. Race one at Bendigo is a benchmark 84 handicap over the 2400 meters. This is the market where Port and Point, sorry, Nepean goes up the favourite at 340. Um, Vadani at 370. And Steel Skies, the third pick at 550. This is a last start effort of Point Nepean at Sandown Hillside over 2400 metres, where I think he went to the front and he battled on really, really well. Uh, it took a good, well, not a good horse to beat him, but he was only second up, I'm pretty sure, second or first up. And condi his condition gave away late, and I think it's a great chance here. Race one, I'm with Port Nepean. I think he's going to be very hard to beat here. He showed last start that um, at Sandham that he's a very adaptable horse. He gets up to 24, and he could blow this field away, and I think he will be doing that. Miss 500 for a second is going well, and has got good form on the board. Eureka String, English King next best. I've got, Eureka, I've got English King as a value runner. He hasn't shown much, but he's been in stakes company for a while now, and this is easily the easiest race he's faced in his career. But I'm with Port Nepean, $30 the win. Race 2 at Bendigo is a benchmark 70 handicap over the 1300 metres. This is the market headed by, well, looking to be a two horse race. Strato at 225 and L Lena's Legend at 550. This is the last start effort of Lena's Legend in the circuit plate at Flemington over 1400 metres. Well, I think she performed very, very well. She was always up near the speed, and she actually looked a winning chance rounding the turn, but, uh, well, she kept on well, but the Swoopers got the race won, with Cardigan Queen driving through, and then Fortune Kiss got the race, but I'm pretty keen here on the chances of Lena's Legend. Race number two at Bendigo, I'm with Lena's Legend. I think she's valued at $5, or five fifty to be exact, and I think she's a very, very good winning chance. Strato for second is a bit short for mine, but I don't want to lose on the race in case she does win. Paldoro for third and Vitruvius for fourth is value. Is an emergency runner as well, and if he gets a run in the field, I think it's going to be very hard to beat. But I'm with Lena's Legend in the second Get, to get the chocolates, 20 the win, and 10 the win on Stretto. I don't want to lose on the race, and she looks to be a good horse. Race 3 at Bendigo is the Vobus Gold Rush over the 1,000 metres. This is the market hit by Shalaman at 480. Uh, field of Flutes at 550, and Don't Change at $6. This is the last start effort of Shalaman. On a heavy 10 at Bendigo, so has had race experience at this track before. And I think it was a very gallant performance, to be honest with you. Looked a really, really good winning chance coming up the straight, though the swoopers got him late, being let roll the dice, and I think he's a very smart horse. He now goes to the uh, ATC size in Sydney this weekend. And Shalaman could have run second, but it was he really kicked hard to get second. I think he's a good chance. Race three, the Vobus Gold Rush. I'm with Shalaman here. I cannot see him being beaten. Uh, well, I can't see the other race horses in the race beating him. The unrace could, uh, but I don't think so. I think he's going to be winning here. Field of Flutes for second is well bred and can run a bit of a race. Ruda Palias is the one that I wanted to talk about here. Out of out of Street Boss and in relation to Lonro as well. Man, he's well bred, and he can he can pull something out here. I reckon he's going to run a big race. And number seventeen, Capital Express. Billy Egan doesn't ride for Nick Ryan very often, so it's interesting to see how the to, to see how the uh, uh, engagement goes. But I'm with Shalaman in the Vobus Gold Rush to get the win. Ten dollars to do so. Race four is a benchmark eighty-four handicap over the one thousand one hundred meters. This is the marker headed by a remark at three ninety. Duchess of Dorset. At uh, 480 and Zorro's Dream at the $7 quote. 
This is the last start effort of Express Pass and Zotto's Dream down the straight of Flemington. Well, I think Zotto's Dream was held up on the inside. Express Pass had the clear run on the outside. He had to weave through and get back to the inside. He was unlucky here not to win. I thought he actually would get the photo myself, but Express Pass is just elite down the straight. And uh, Zorro's Dream really likes Bendigo. Race four at Bendigo. I'm with Zorro's Dream. What a run he pulled out last start behind Express Pass, only getting pipped on the line. That's the second time that that horse has done it to him at Flemington. I think he's getting him a track that he loves and is going to be very hard to beat. Duchess of Dorset for second is a very, very good horse. Remark for third. Yeah, didn't have a lot of luck last start, but it's going to probably be up to the plate or even be at his best to be winning here. Luana Magic for fourth is the value, but I'm with Zorro's Dream in the fourth to get the win. 35 to do so. Race 5 at Bendigo is the Bendigo Gold Bracelet over the 1,400 metres. This is the market, headed by Le Chevalier at $4, being the favourite. Cyril AMS at 440 and Vest between the third, third pick in the market at $5. This is the last start effort of Cyril AMS at Flemington, where the leader was off and gone and Anna Vista bolted in. But considering that she was wide for most of the trip and in the straight, I'm going to be very, very forgiving of this run. She ran it past a couple late that were beaten, but I, I, I think she's worth another chance here uh, because she was behind a pretty smart horse in Anna Vista, and she's definitely worth another chance. Race 5 is the Bendigo Gold Bracelet. I'm with Cyril and Miss here. The form, the figures, everything tells me she's going to be the winner. She didn't have a lot of luck last start behind Anna Vista who bolted in and then probably felt the ground in City and didn't do that well but I think she's going to be very hard to beat here number three Cyril AMS Foxy Frieda for second she can pull out her own fresh the Chevalier is too short and Vest Vespertine for fourth has trialed between runs but I'm with Cyril AMS in the fifth to get the chocolates 15 the win Race 7 of the day is the Bendigo St. Ledger Trial, where Can't Go Wong goes up the favourite at 3 90 but still doesn't have a jockey. The Cunning Fox at $4, and a Celestial Fury at $7. This is the last start effort of the Cunning Fox in the Alistair Clark plate. Uh, it probably was a bit of a big class rise for him, though Billy Eager did ride him this night, but... He never got into the race. He was never in the right spot. Um, yeah, he just never got in the into the race. Back in grade and to a, back to Bendigo or to Bendigo, I think it's going to be a very, very good winning chance, and I think he'll win. Race six at Bendigo is the St. Ledger Trial. I am with the Cunning Fox, Paddy Payne, Billy Egan. Always a good combination. And I think that they can get another winner on the board for the combination here. He's been running really well and was in the Alistair Clark last start. And I think it was a bit too far up in grade for him. Coming back to uh, the right grade and coming back to the right track in Bendigo. I think he's going to be very hard to beat. Can't go wrong for second. He's a good horse and will get its chance. Princeton Award for third. And Figo the Great for fourth. And is the value in the race. But I'm with the Cunning Fox in the St. Ledger Trial. Race 7 is a listed Bendigo Guineas over the 1400 metres. This is the market headed by Cardigan Queen at 280. Looking very hard to beat. Gun Duck at $5. And Sharp Response at 650. Now, I already looked at this replay for Lena's Legend, I know, but this is the last start effort of Cardigan Queen, who comes out of the same race, and I think she was fantastic here. She didn't have a lot of luck. She was swarmed up between horses. When Blushing Tycoon uh, made a dancing out to the outside, he found the split and absolutely charged through for Johnny Allen. Um, I think he's going to be a great... I think he's the winner, to basically. I can't see anything beating him. And he's just got such an explosive turn of foot, as you can see here, and he should have got the bob. For the listed Bendigo Guineas, I'm with Cardigan Queen. Should have got the bob in last start. Uh, was unlucky not to, and just powered the line at Flemington. I think it's going to get its chance here. I think I don't think it's too short at the quite, and I think it's going to trot in here. 
Asymmetrical for second. You can't doubt this horse is going really, really well and is a place chance and can for the whole and could possibly even win. Race no and then for third, I've got Charge for two from two, second up the record speeds for itself and March Missions for fourth. Um, it's got to put the runs together on the board now. And he's, he's going well, but I would want to see him do it again first. But I'm with Cardigan Queen and the listed Bendigo Guineas, $50 to win. way back but ironclad has raced to the lead and remains unbeaten in the land of oz ironclad by a length and three quarters platoon vassal race eight is a listed golden mile over the 1600 meters and last year's winner in ironclad goes up the favorite at 460 after a very impressive win last start in morpheville rio dini next pick at 750 and then 950 for i am superman this is the last start effort of Nancho up in Sydney in the Chelmsford Stakes. Uh, he, I don't think he liked going to Sydney way. It was his only start in Australia. Um, he wasn't pressured at all, and the jockey eased him down. There obviously was something wrong, and he had a good spell since he's come to Melbourne to Archie Alexander. I think he's a winning chance, and I do think he's over the odds. Ray Seed is a listed golden mile on there. I think that the horse that won it last year is going to be pipped out here. I'm pretty keen on the chances of Nan Show. Formerly with up in Sydney, I can't remember who the trainer is with, but it was formerly up in Sydney. One start there and didn't perform well. Came has come down to Melbourne to uh, uh, um, Archie Alexander, and from all reports, he's thrived since being down here. He's 11 from 19. The record speaks for himself. He's a German import, and I think he's going to run really, really well. And at 23, I think he's way overs. Ironclad, the obvious danger, and can win this race for the second year in a row. Riadini, the Sydney starter for third, and Holby in for fourth. He's been running well, but I think he had his chance last start at Flemington to uh, run into the money, but was beaten by a pretty good one. But like I said, I'm with Nancho, three each way, and 20 the win, just in case he does win the for the second year in a row. Ironclad. Race number nine is benchmark 100. You don't get many of these over the 1400 meters at Bendigo to finish the day where corner pocket goes up the 310 favorite. Looks he looks his race to lose. Then you've got Poland at seven dollars and Regards Marie at eight dollars. This is the last start effort of Connor Pocket at Flemington in the Blamey Stakes. Look, this day he proved he's well up to the class. And a lot of these horses actually are coming out of this race to race in the Doncaster. Being Mr. Brightside, Inspirational Girl, and Banker's Choice if he gets a run. And Pondus ran well last week in the Morning Gin Cups. There's been form around him. I think he's just the winner in my mind. I cannot see him being beaten. For the last of the day... He's one of my favourite horses, and I think he's going to be bolting in here. He'll win by at least five lengths, corner pocket. He's a good horse, and he'll be winning again here. Regards, Marie, for second. Pulls it, can pull a run, can pull a run off second up. Uh, second slip's got a good uh, second up record, as the name would suggest. At just a can of the value at over 20s. But I think corner pocket will be taking the last $80 to win. Thank you for watching my preview for Golden Mile Day. I hope you'll find your winner. Cheers.